Both Pat Morgan and Clem Bell surfboards evolved out of Port Phillip Bay, Melbourne, where strong onshore winds whip up infrequent surfable wind swells. Williamstown mates Terry Clem and Reg Bell teamed up as Clem Bell in what was then a very working class suburb with tough, hard drinking dock workers spilling out of every corner pub. 10 kilometres away as the crow flies, cabinet maker Pat Morgan was shaping boards for the more affluent Brighton Baths locals like Doug Warbrick, Terry Wall, Rod Brooks and Simon Buttonshaw, while also fine tuning his skills with George Rice surfboards in landlocked Preston. The Clem Bell team relocated from Williamstown to Yarraville, Spotswood and Gardenvale before the shift to Torquay in the early 70s. They had already developed a strong following in the Point Lonsdale and Phillip Island areas where Clemmy eventually settled. Pat Morgan made the full-time move to Torquay around 1966 and set up business at the iconic premises of 17 Anderson Street. The 1970 world titles at Bells Beach and Johanna saw Pat align himself with Californian Drew Harrison, then designing longer, faster boards suited to the winter waves at Bells and Winky Pop. Persian slipper noses, hard down rails, twin keel fishes and keel fins soon followed. After a move to Rip Curl and other ocean pursuits in sailing and windsurfing, Pat relocated to Rainbow Bay, Queensland, where he now lives and surfs. In 2015, he was inducted into the International Surfboard Manufacturers Hall of Fame. The Clem Bell move to Torquay proved very successful, with managers Rod Brooks, then Laurie Thompson, guiding the team through the 70s. Shapers included Kim Thompson, Wayne Lynch, Strapper, Don Allcroft, Morris Cole, Jim Pollock, and several well-known internationals each Easter. Reg also made the move to the Gold Coast, while Clemmy retired to his beloved Phillip Island, still shaping the odd retro board for longtime surfing friends. Yeah. 
forgiving than the modern day board so it kind of like forces you to consider like where to put your foot and where to position it in the wave and stuff which I liked it was um yeah, it was, it was interesting to, to ride for sure I, I kind of got used to it towards the end and yeah it um like it because they're so heavy I was, I had to like actually step back a lot further and actually put a lot more pressure and kind of bring it around and kind of guide it around a lot more. Yeah, as soon as you kind of find like the sweet spot of trimming, it just, you stand there and just picks up so much speed and it's, yeah, it's a good board. <laughs> it's fun. It just sits in the pocket so bloody well and just maintains its speed. Like you can't lose its line really, I swear. Once you've locked that thing in, it just kept holding. Highlining through everything. A little bit of V in the back just to kind of give it release on your tail, I guess. But that was almost my favorite board to ride. <laughs> uh, the Pat Morgan for me, any day of the week, I loved it. Uh, the Clem Bell, we were just starting to make friends, but it's a nice board, just got to let it run and, and flow. You had yeah, the one I first took? Yeah, I love that. You set that really, really well. You can well. give me that any day of the week, I love it. It's very nice. My kind of board, yeah. Changing over from the, oh. from the Pat Morgan to the Clem Bell. I had a bit of trouble on the Clem Bell, but I hadn't ridden an old Bell for a while, so it was a little bit of a battle, but got a few in the end. Yeah. The, uh, the spliced lime green one. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of rock and roll in it. Took me a while to work it out, yeah. A little bit of a roll, yeah, yeah. Had to sit a bit lower in the pocket. Um, but yeah, the Pat Morgan I had a ball on, so. I do really like riding this board. Uh, I really like the rails. <laughs> the knifey rails. Um, it's just really heavy and it's really hard for me to paddle to get it going. So, and I really have to angle it into the wave to get on the wave as well. And because I'm middle, it's like three steps backwards for me to turn. <laughs> so I really have to use my feet as well. Otherwise it's just a stand and trim sort of really nice. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I have to take off on the line though, because it's, so hard to turn for me. Nice little fin. And it sings. So, what's your favourite Bob Dylan song? <laughs> yeah, the, um, the tail sings, it hums when you're in trim. So, it's audible. 
And I, some I people know. might not like that, but I actually like it. <laughs> yeah? Oh, no, it's, I really like it. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it went really good. Um, easy to get to the nose and kind of stable. Well. I was really surprised because I've never ridden a, an old mile before. And yeah, I wasn't disappointed. I didn't, go, I didn't know how it was going to go, but very happy. And I think Jack's pretty happy as well. He's going to have it back after that. So happy days. It's awesome. It's quite heavy, but I think out of the, all the miles, it's probably one of the lightest. And um, I think to me, it felt quite similar to one of the miles that I had. So it wasn't too difficult to get used to it. Took me maybe a couple of ways, but then, yeah, once you figure it out, in those beautiful conditions, it's pretty easy. So, yeah, I'm quite surprised by the fin as well. And never really any anything like it, but it just went really good. So I'm stuck. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, started off on the stringerless plenty, the yellow one. The thing definitely had a lot of roll in the bottom, which made it kind of nice and swingy and loose but when you got it in a nice line could hold it but the nose rides were a bit I don't know wobbly bobbly <laughs> but um it's still a lot of fun for sure this thing's definitely a bit more of an outline I'm used to and it feels a bit more stable and neutral you, know, you still need to get a few more waves on it but really liking it so far yeah I was about to say I've only seen two Pat Morgan longboards ever really personally and this is the first one I've ever ridden which is pretty bloody awesome a nice like uprighty fin to it but only been two waves so far but the yellow board definitely was a nice gem you could really kind of bounce it and work it got such a good morning for it can't complain at all happy man <laughs> thank you very much Yeah, so I took the Clem Bell out first and um, really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, in terms of what I thought, probably not exactly what I thought it'd be like. Um, it feels really heavy out of the water and so, you know, super, super good feeling, really nice rails. But um, I was just saying before, it actually feels a lot more lively in the water for whatever reason. I think a combination of, yeah, the, the sharpened rails and the fact that it's so fast in the water uh, did make it feel probably a little more lively. It's still you definitely had you set your line correctly with it. Um, I think, yeah, it was, uh, you definitely, it let you know, it kind of responded if you weren't in the right spot or if you came out of the pocket. Um, it was a little bit tricky and you'd probably, probably fall, or that's what I was finding just because I wasn't super used to it. But when you were dialed into the pocket and getting your turns done in the pocket, um, that was really fun. Um, I just think you could have pushed too hard, so you kind of had to, yeah, uh, I guess monitored around a little bit more, um, but I really liked that just listening to the board and seeing how it felt and kind of taking it as it came. I thought that was really fun and it set its line really, really nicely as well. So had a lot of fun with this one. Um, and then I moved over to the, uh, to the Pat Morgan. And this one initially kind of felt like a little bit more of, I suppose, a lot more dynamic and uh, a lot freer off the tail. Um, it is a fair bit lighter than the, uh, than the Clem Bell. 
Um, but I got one at the end that was really, really fun. It is, it is a lot more dynamic off the tail. Um, you know, it's a lot narrower once you're out there and paddling this thing. It's fairly narrow at the nose, which is probably the first thing that came to my mind when I was paddling on it. I thought that's pretty different. Um, but again, it set its line really, really nicely. I think you could dictate what you wanted to do with it a little bit easier um, in terms of its responsiveness off the tail and maybe being able to kind of engage a little bit of rail from the midpoint of the board as well. Um, and then there are a couple there where I felt like I came out of the pocket a little bit on the nose rides, but it still held pretty nicely, which was really interesting. Um, so yeah, I actually felt like this one is a little bit more, more dynamic. Um, Maybe if I was in 67, this would be my beach break board and that would be my point break board. In terms of that one, held its line really nicely and this one you could kind of do a bit more of what you wanted with it. But really enjoyed both of them. Um, stoked to be able to get in, get out there on a, on a couple of these and have a bit of fun. Yeah.